Hello, and welcome to Make a Difference, where children come first and play as a priority. My name is Sarah Gould Hood. And I'm Wendy Sullivan. We're Regional Infant Toddler Specialists at the Capital District Child Care Council. And today we're going to show you how to make light tables! These light tables are so fun. Children are just naturally drawn to light, and I love the fact that all you have to do is present the source and they will just totally take over and do all the trial and error that's done. There's so many things to love about light tables and one of my favorite parts of having a light table for children to play with is that their brain is trying so hard to wrap its head, like wrap itself around what it's looking at. It's making all of these brain cell connections because it really doesn't know what, it, what it's looking at and it wants to know what's happening and that's what will drive the play and that's what will keep them engaged. And that's one of the many fabulous things of having a light table. To make light boxes, you need a clear plastic storage container about the size of a shoe box, white spray paint that bonds to plastic, a touch light, and various materials to play with. So now we're going to make the light table. All you have to do is pick your box, and then you need some white spray paint. And there's different types of spray paint out there, but you really need spray paint that adheres to plastic. Not all spray paint will adhere to plastic, so you just make sure when you're buying it, it says made to stick to plastic. And, all, and this is a little bit of the tricky part. You just want one thin coating of spray paint around the sides of the box. And then a barely even a little dash of a spray on the t bottom of the box. So I'll show you how to do that. So I just like to kind of flip it. Get fairly close, turn. It gets a little bit drippy sometimes, but that's okay. Kids don't mind, it's no big deal. And then this is the part, this is the key part here, just a little spray. You don't want to make it so you can't see through that part because the light won't go through very well. And if you feel like your sides could just be a little more solid, just go on the sides one more time. for a little extra. And then you just simply allow that to dry. You can go to any department store and find lights for closets. Usually that's what you're looking for, just a tap light. This is one of my favorite tap lights. It's one of the least expensive ones that I can find. And all you have to do is put the batteries in it, turn it on, and put it in your box. And you're ready to go. Just for another type of light, these are neon lights, so they're a little bit brighter, a little bit more expensive, but they add a nice effect Yeah, as they're well. very bright. Nice and practical. People might ask, well, what, what, then what, what do you do? Yeah, what now? <laughs> so you can buy like light table blocks and different things like that, but we have a homemade variety of different types of things that you can do. This is one of my favorites. So this is just a Ziploc bag with clear hair gel and uh, sparkly glitter. And you can put that on. And they'll let children see what they'll do. They'll do all sorts of different things with it, but if you make little, you can make different designs in it, different patterns. It has a different sensory feel to it. The texture is pretty interesting. Like a jellyfish, kind of. It is like a jellyfish. This one's just glitter. Again, cool texture, and you can watch. The light will change the different shades and the shine and the gleam of the glitter that's in the bag. This is just one way to experience some light play. There are many other ways, too. We did a little bit of exploring with some flashlights, which um, it was the same process. We really didn't know what would happen, so we just went out and shopped, and we were playing ourselves. So we uh, have some different props here. So this is just, um, it's like a knobby child's ball, but when they shine the light through it, you can see how it's all it's like fish scales almost, it's very cool. They'll sit for minutes and minutes and minutes just moving this around. And what's cool is once the children know how to use the flashlights, then they can just go around the house and pull things out of the kitchen drawer or see what toys of right. will make a reflection or not make a reflection. Where will it do it? Will it do it if it's bright? Will it do it if it's dark? Um, this is just a little sink drainer, but you get all of those little spaghetti piece, pieces of light. And what I saw children working on was first they moved the object. 
but then they started moving the flashlight Ooh. and they got a lot more movement that way. Yeah. Um, and some of them actually put the stuff on like a hat. Oh, that was really good. Isn't that great? I think the thing that I like most about light play is that I learned so much as I played with Sarah while we were figuring out what, what we could do with light. And it resonated even more with me when I took it out with me and shared it with adults that share space with children. All of a sudden, I saw adults playing like toddlers right alongside of toddlers. And I truly believe that's play at an, in its best form when children have a hands-on guide with them during their play. I just think they take so much more with them. I think it builds relationship and trust. Um, and I think it's very important that there's always that connection between play and adult, adults that support children as they're working. I think that's kind of learning at its best. Absolutely. And one of my favorite things about light tables is that you can really build a sense of wonder for children into their environment. I think sometimes we forget about stimulating visual senses because we kind of take for granted that we're looking all the time and seeing a lot of things, but when we can really wow our eyeballs, we're really doing a lot of fun things for children, and adults included. A bubble. Touch it. A bubble. Uh -oh. For more information about the services we offer and developmentally appropriate ideas for children, visit our website at cdccc.org. Be sure to tune in next time when we show you how to make tutus.